Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific car review, of course from the selection of cars that were already in the game. This is not a, a pack update vehicle if you will, but it's a car that like many of the others that we've discussed before in GT6 is definitely worthy of being looked at again for a number of reasons. One of course, there are far more people on the channel than there were back when I first reviewed it. The quality of the video itself is better and even the quality of the game you could say is better in many ways. The physics, the graphics, the sound, sometimes <laughs> the performance can sometimes be better. For instance, the class system now, it can benefit certain cars for sure. And this vehicle is one that I think is very important to review, not because necessarily it's going to dominate everything it comes up against, of course not. That's kind of the point, they don't really want any one car dominating if at all possible, although it does still tend to happen. But it's a car that's easy to discount for a reason that I've mentioned with a number of cars, because this car is of course the C7 Corvette Stingray. Now a lot of people are probably thinking, yeah it's cool, it's a nice Corvette, but I want the Z06, I want the newer one, I want the faster one. And yes, you could make an argument for that, of course a Z06 would be very cool, but Gran Turismo and Polyphony are kind of notorious for not adding the latest car until quite a while after it's the latest. <laughs> they tend to add a latest car about two or three years later. So expect the Z06 sometime probably in Gran Turismo 7, if I'm honest, and maybe it'll come to this game, but I'm not holding my breath for it anytime soon. However, does that mean that you should discount this one? That is the question, because you'll notice something interesting about this car, and that is the name. Because usually the base model Corvettes are not called the Stingray. If you look at the C6 or the C5, they're not called the C5 Stingray, they're not called the C6 Stingray, they're just called the C5 Coupe, or the C6 Coupe, or Coupe, for Americans. This is called the C7 Stingray. Now is that just a play on the name to sell cars? No, it actually isn't, because Stingray is an important name for Corvette. It signifies their more advanced models, not a Z06, that's a totally different animal. The Stingray tends to be their more technically advanced, they're more engineered, they're over-engineered model, if you will, the one that takes it to the next level. Not necessarily the most powerful on the grid, but the one which is that little bit more focused on being a great all-rounder. Even as far back as the classic Corvettes, that was the point of the Stingray. That is exactly the point here, and as soon as you drive it for the first time, if you look at the interior for instance, even if you look at the outside styling of the car, you can immediately tell that this is not your granddad's Corvette. This is almost like a time warp from the C4ZR1, which is my personal favourite Corvette of all time, to today. It's almost like they bypassed the C5 and the C6 completely and jumped straight from that car to this one. In a very specific way, this is a technologically forward-thinking Corvette. It's not an analogue instrument, which is what the majority of the C5 and the C6s have that vibe of. The C5, even in Z06 form, is a pretty simple old-school sports car. It's a very good one, but it doesn't really present that much new. It just does the formula of a Corvette very well. Likewise with the C6, even the ZR1, it's a fantastic performance car, but it's not exactly forward thinking. It has a very basic interior, which was often the worst point of many of the reviews that the car got, given the price that it was, but it was just really good and really fast. It wasn't trying to be a Nissan GTR. That's the difference with stuff like this and with the C4 ZR1. They were technologically advanced very forward thinking as far as Corvettes go. Now this one does not have the raw performance of a Z06, of course not. It's got just over 450 horsepower, 6.2 litre V8, it's got more torque than power though, 459 pound-feet, so it's got good specs but not great ones. And that ties into what I was saying earlier on about this being a car that is ironically, given that it's one of the newest cars in Gran Turismo at the moment, it's still easy to overlook because it's easy to get complacent when new shiny options are added. And there was something that I used to talk about a lot on Gran Turismo 6, and it turned out to be true. I predicted that the NSX, in a similar way to how this Corvette C7 was in GT6, was going to be much more of a focus point in the next game. That turned out to be exactly true. We have the road car, which is way faster than the concept was in GT6. We have the Group 4 race car, Group 3 race car, the rally car. The NSX is very heavily focused on. That turned out to be exactly true, that prediction. This Corvette was that in the previous game. In GT6, this was a fantastic 
car for bang for buck, and especially around Route X, because it was dirt cheap, one of the quickest cars in the game, and the fuel economy was fantastic for top speed racing. You could get four or five laps, or sometimes even more, if you got slipstream permanently around special stage Route X. Now, that alone would make it great. But that was the thing about this car. It was more than that. It was a great track car as well, and for 51,000 credits, that's brilliant value. Because, of course, this is technically the base model C7. It was the first one to come out. And so you would assume, well, it's probably okay, but I'm waiting for the Z06. Don't think that way. This is not a base model anything. It's a great sports car. I would say a great super sports car. And yes, the specs aren't going to shatter the world, but it's a fantastic rival for the Vantage, for the F-Type, because it's not heavy either. 453 horsepower is modest, but 1500 kilos, which is 1.5 metric tons on the dot, is a great weight to be working with. You can of course easily take it lower. The basic horsepower per ton straight out of the box is 302, which for its power is not bad at all, especially for a car that weighs that much. It's not obscenely heavy, but it's no flyweight. And across the board it gives you so much to work with, and crucially it gives you a lot to work with for such a low price. That's like half the price of a GTR, and the GTR is already one of the cheapest performance cars you can get of its type, so to be half that price again is very impressive. It's like a third of the price or even a quarter of the price of many European rivals from brands like Mercedes, Jaguar or Porsche. And that is the great thing about Corvette, and I would say that's the great thing about a lot of American performance cars. I'm a huge fan of American cars, old ones, new ones, I don't love them all, but one thing that they offer is very similar to Japan, and I've mentioned this before because it's true, value. They give you huge bang for buck, they are good as circuit racers, deceptively good in fact for racing, they're great in a straight line which everybody already knows, they're great drifters pretty much straight out of the box, and they give you so much to work with for such a low price. That is pretty much across the board as far as American performance cars go. Now I would actually give the edge as a track car to this Corvette rather than the Viper, because the Viper has more of a straight line inclination, in road form at least, whereas the Corvette has always had a little bit more of a track focus to it. And to me, that really pays off here. It's a fantastic super sports car overall. 51,000 is barely anything to pay for something this good. And although I'm not saying this is going to dominate every race you enter, of course not. That's kind of the point of the classes. But don't discount this car just because there are new shiny options out there. It's still a great one. It's still a really good Corvette. And it certainly honors the Corvette name. I'm a big fan of it. Maybe we'll get a Z06. Maybe we'll get others in the future, but even if we don't, this is still a great car. But that's it for this pick overall. Of course, I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.